you know, he's a aggressive mindset guy, and it's been great. How is he different than, than the other guys? How does he change that mindset? Wired up different. You know, he's intense every time. Conversation's intense, practice intense, individuals intense, everything is intense. There's no slowing down with Ben Mason, so it's been great. Harbaugh said that the two freshman interior guys, Mozzie Smith and Chris Hinton, looked like they were at least close to being in the two deep, if not in it. What have you seen from them, and in how have they looked in the sense of being a first year? Well, Mozzie has done a great job of uh, reforming his body from when he first got here, and you got to give credit to our strength staff, strength staff and Abigail. They've helped him with that a lot, and now he's he's dropped some weight and he's moved a lot better. And Chris Hinton big, athletic, and can run. So both of them have great qualities that you look for in an interior D lineman. Also, how is David Ojapo looking? I know he put on some uh, put on some good weight since he's arrived. He can run, he can fly. He, he's very, very athletic. Just uh, trying to catch him up with the, the knowledge of the game. And he needs just a lot of reps and experience. Sean, how's Michael Dwarf Forrest health? Has he been practicing? Yeah, Dwarf Forrest is doing everything he can do. I, uh, I will never comment on any injuries and stuff, but he's been doing everything he can when he can. And he's doing a great job of being involved in meetings and walkthroughs and even practice. So he's doing a good job. We've heard a lot about Donovan Jeter. Is he cemented as starting? Role won't comment on depth and any of that stuff, but he's done a great job of, uh, now, you know, in, in camp, you, you always look at what's good, and I look at what we can still improve with the time that we have, and he's, his part, he's doing a good job, but still long ways to go. How is, um, or what is Mike Dana added to this group? Experience, you know, he's a, a little uh, older, um, both on the field and age, and, and he's, he's bringing a lot of good experience of, of playing the game, you know, situational in practice. He understands down and distance, personnel, all that kind of stuff. So he brings good experience. So an easy transition for him to get to this? I don't know it's easy, but, it's, you know, it, he makes it look easy sometimes. But it's, you know, experience helps with that. You didn't see this offensive line in person last year, but what, what are they giving you, this group? Experience, like, experience. They have a good experience. They have a good core of, of group that they're very close in, in uh, their chemistry, you know, they do a great job of communicating their steps. They do a good job of, of working together. So it's good for us. It's a good challenge for our D-line. Carlo was in here the other day talking about this new sense of urgency he feels as a senior. Like, how has he passed that along to the rest of the group? Because he said that was one of his goals in camp. Carlo is uh, is our emotional leader and vocal leader, and he's he's done a great job of, of accepting that role and taking advantage of it. So. Off the field stuff, I rely on him on making sure the guys are doing the right things. And on the field, he shows up at practice. Jim Harbaugh mentioned interior pass rush as maybe one weakness he wanted to see maybe improved upon in fall camp. Uh, I guess how is it compared to when you first got here, what you're seeing from the interior pass rush right now? Um, just the recognition of play action. There's a lot of RPO stuff in our offense, so just recognizing run to pass, you know, just trying to get them to see that faster. So that's probably helping them a little bit. But like I said, we still got a long ways to go in, in perfecting that craft. I think you mentioned earlier, but does uh, Hinton have natural interior pass rush? Oh, yeah. It's a guy inside. I mean, it seemed like in high school that was his yeah. a little bit of everything. With that, with that size and, and then strength, he's, he, he can push that pocket. And then when he decides to go to the edge, he, he has the good hips to get to the edge. See a little further, too. little further along than a guy that, who comes in in June as a freshman, do you feel like, typically? Probably a little bit but because he's a very mature kid. You know, you, you have a conversation with Chris. He's a mature kid, and, and he's, he loves the game, and he, he's, always in, he's always in the room learning, you know, on a board watching film. So he's, he's probably ahead in that part, the mental part. Is there anyone who's, you know, kind of, that we haven't necessarily mentioned that's kind of impressing you thus far, full camp? Mm. They're all impressing me. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're, they're a hungry group, and, and they, got, they're, they're, they got a lot of chip on their shoulders, and I like it. Harbaugh mentioned Taylor Upshaw yesterday. How much better has he gotten since the spring? A lot better. You know, Taylor is a very athletic, aggressive, mindset type of player. Uh, the knowledge of it was the biggest thing that I needed to help him with, you know, 
getting his plays down and recognizing uh, reactions from the old line and what, what he's getting and so he could get proper reactions. But he's done a great job of stepping up and, and competing. When you first met Quiddy, what was your first impression of him? Too quiet for my liking, but um, <laughs> now I understand why because he's he's probably one of my favorite ones in the room because because he shows up every day and just works and works and works. But uh, strong, uh, very athletic, and and passionate about the game more than you think. He's probably my uh, a leader as a you know by example. Doesn't say much. Doesn't mean he doesn't talk. You know, when he really wants to talk, the guys really listen. He said it before bowl practice that he'd actually improved on that, that he had become more vocal. Yeah, <laughs> still not. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't care if you're if you're vocal or not, as long as you show up and work, and that's what he does. You know, um, Carla does a good job of being the vocal leader and the emotional leader, but Quiddy is 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 a workhorse. Does Josh Uche work out with you too, or does he spend most of his time with the linebackers? Or linebackers, okay. you know, linebackers. But every time you can steal someone with, like Uche, you do. But he's he's with Coach Brown most of the time. With Ben Mason, I mean, you talked about him earlier, but how how will you utilize him? I mean, this is he's added what twenty pounds, and mm -hmm. he's making a, a position change. How legitimate can he uh, can he play a role? How legitimate? Oh, it's it's be? it's it's very legitimate. He's. His mindset and um, the way he's attacking the new position, new changes, has been very, very good. So um, he's going to have a big role. Is he still screaming? Because uh, Caesar said last year that he would scream, you know, coming off the ball. He just yes, he still is screaming. <laughs> <laughs> Any other? You guys got anything else? For I guess coach? Aiden Hutchinson been pitched as a potential breakout player. What have you seen? Is he? at that level already, or what sort of steps do you want to see? If everybody could be like Aiden, Quiddy, Carlo, Aiden is, Aiden is a very, very special competitor. He's, a, he's very competitive, hard on himself. So that's why he's, he's going to be a great player, you know, and that's my expectation of him. And, and if he just keep doing what he's doing, he'll, he'll fill that role. Anything else? Appreciate it, guys. Thank, Thank you. you very much.